Hello and welcome to the DSO Imager channel. My name is James and tonight I'm going to give you a quick look at a new plugin for Photoshop uh, that removes stars from images. So up until now Starnet's been the primary tool that we've used to remove stars and you can use it in Pixinsight or there's a standalone version. Uh, but now uh, there's a plugin uh, called Star Exterminator and this is by the same gentleman that did Gradient Exterminator if anyone remembers that one. Uh, Gradient Exterminator is a powerful tool and does a fantastic job with uh, fighting gradients and uh, now we have a a star uh, star remover. So if anyone isn't aware Russell Crome in astrophotography he's got some of the best images out there so you really want to check out his website uh, but we have the star exterminator over here and so it's a plug-in for Photoshop and here he's got the usage here he's got steps on how to uh, create a star layer and it was all pretty simple and you get a 30-day trial with this so I decided to give it a go and I uh, tested it out on my latest image which was uh, M20 the Trifid Nebula so this is pretty much just after uh, doing the uh, the uh, channel combination uh, I did use um, uh, deconvolution on the luminance and this is Starnet right and so we all know that Starnet is very powerful and has really changed the way a lot of us do our processing but it's it's got some issues and the main thing and something that I've been struggling with is these artifacts uh, it's actually quite noticeable down here and uh, with larger stars right and so you remove the stars and you put your stars back you maybe do some work on them and, and these artifacts kind of show through and I've been playing around with different ways of trying to deal with this maybe create a mask and just hit this area with strong uh, strong noise reduction and other step is to use like the healing brush and, and Photoshop or maybe clone stamp uh, but none of those options really worked brilliantly for me so these are the results that I got with uh, star exterminator and this is a huge difference So, I mean, you're seeing almost no artifacts here. And look how much cleaner. I mean, in this area down here, it's the difference is amazing. I mean, if you look closely, you can see where some of those stars were. Let's go back over to that really big, bright one. Yeah, that's it right there. I mean, that cleaned it up so well. It's just, it is very impressive how well that worked. And so the starless image itself looks amazing. So before I go on, I'll just sit here for a moment and uh, let you guys really scrutinize these images. So anyway, uh, I got this version here and then I continued to do what I always do with uh, curves. I ran some color masks and I ended up with this, which I was really happy with. I mean it's so clean and you can really get a good look at the structure in the nebula with uh, with this so I mean I usually prefer the stars in my image but I mean this this did such a great job really impressed with it and uh, the final image I, I followed the steps that Russell had on his website because I'm not uh, uh, an expert in Photoshop at all. I'm way more comfortable in Pixinsight than I am with Photoshop. And it was uh, no problem for me to follow. And so this is what my final image of M20 came out to be. And so once I had the stars, I, I moved them back into uh, Pixinsight. And I gave them my standard treatment. I played with curves. I played with saturation. I actually uh, used uh, morphologi mor morphological transformation on this one. It did create kind of a fuzzy effect. That's kind of why I stopped using it. Uh, but if I'm honest, my tracking wasn't very good uh, for much of this image. It was pretty windy. And so 
the fuzz actually helps obscure the bad stars. <laughs> so anyway, so this is what uh, I ended up with and I was really impressed and of course naturally I just ran a whole bunch of images through uh, gradient, uh, excuse me, star exterminator. So let's take a look at those real quick. Now of course it's not perfect and there's a couple of scenarios where it's really going to struggle and uh, this is one of them. So this is uh, a shot that I did earlier in the year or was it last year? I can't remember now. Anyway, this is uh, a wide field shot with M M100 in the center and of course we got a ton of galaxies, really tiny little galaxies in there. They're all over the place in this. and. Um, I mean, StarNet, I, when I did this image, I ended up not using StarNet because StarNet didn't treat the galaxies very well, not, and understandably. You got some big stars here, and uh, it, it was treating the galaxies like stars. And so, anyway, I tried that with uh, Star Exterminator, and, I mean, it, it wiped out nearly everything. So, not too great here. Uh, but I mean again this this was really a stress test for the tool um, Star Exterminator is AI based and there's uh, going to be continual updates to it so it may get better at processing an image like this but really the answer for this would be to make a mask and protect all your galaxies and then apply it all right well let's run through some of the other images and see how it did another test all in attack right that one is a uh, breaker for everyone so this is a shot I took a couple of years ago with an ASI 1600 and um, and my uh, SV70T, the 70 millimeter refractor. Uh, this is a an SHO uh, pattern of horse head. Uh, by the way, the uh, halo for O3 was really really bad on all in the tack naturally, uh, and I mixed in 10% of HA with the O3 on the green channel and that seemed to have taken care of the halo. I mean the halo was huge. It was like going around here. But we still see the typical uh, diffraction pattern that we're used to with the 1600 on bright stars. But take a look at this. Holy cow. And this image wasn't a high uh, integration time image for me either. I don't remember exactly how much was in there but I think it was like five hours if that so it wasn't it wasn't a lot and it's just really this really did a number on this so you can see kind of where these stars are but I mean if this was StarNet there would be no doubt where the stars are located at okay moving on so elephant trunk I took this earlier in the year again this was kind of a lower integration time for me typically I don't remember 13 hours or so but man I mean again it did a fantastic job so I mean, if you were getting close you can see where all the stars are but they it they blended them in really well And I mean, we're not seeing any uh, any damage to the details. If anything, the details just show up much better. Here's an old shot that I took. This was, I would I would have to say, you know, when you reach a certain threshold with with your image in, uh, uh, capture and your um, processing skills. I feel like this Thor shot that I did with the Edge 8 and that uh, ASI 533 was kind of the beginning of the next phase for me. Uh, and I think this was also my first top pick on Astrobin, if I recall. But anyway, uh, the stars actually never looked that great on this image and uh, Star Exterminator took care of them, no problem. This again, very clean image, very happy the way that looks. All right, next up, let's take a look at the Pelican. Another image that came out great. This was an image I was quite happy with when I finished it. And this starless version does not disappoint.
here's uh all right so the pelican that's with the uh, asi 294 mono astronomic uh narrowband filters six nanometers and the uh, celestron edge hd with the uh reducer this shot is also with astronaut filters i mean astronomic filters although the ha was an astronaut five nanometer this is with an asi 1600 on that 70 millimeter refractor the sv70t and so you can see a little bit more here the stars are more noticeable on this shot this shot had 37 hours this had a lot of integration time i just parked it on a full moon cycle and left it there the whole time. But, I mean you can really see all this dust in here very clearly without those stars. Now normally I would process, I would remove the stars after the stretch and then process all everything and then put the stars back on there. These examples here, these are images that that I have completely finished and I just went back and through uh, to Star Exterminator on them just to uh, see how they look so I mean th these these areas here probably wouldn't show up as prominently if I had processed it the way I normally do and M101 Thought this would be interesting to see how a galaxy looked. So there's a really bright star there, and it definitely left some artifacts there. But I mean, still not. I mean, not bad. You would, but Starnet, you'd have that checker pattern on there. Now, of course, with this, there there were some smaller galaxies in the background, so of course you don't get those. Just blows them out. But I'm looking at this shot and I feel like I could do more processing on this now. Ah, and here's my, uh, my Crescent Nebula. I mean, that just, just looks amazing. I'm like tempted to go back and tweak this a little bit more. Maybe, uh, maybe run another uh, unsharp mask on there or something to sharpen things up a touch. And the last example I have is my Pickering's triangle. Another image I was really happy with. And I thought the Starless version was very cool, and you know the trend continues with this image. I mean, it's so smooth and clean compared to the Starnet version. So, like I said, you get a 30-day free trial with this. It's a plug-in uh, for Photoshop. I bet all the Photoshop users that are not running PixInsight are going to be excited about this one. So anyway, I'll continue to, to play with it and uh, I'll probably integrate it into my regular uh, processing. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, drop a note in the comment section and definitely check out uh, Star Exterminator. Please subscribe and uh, like this video. Thanks a lot and have a good evening.